Hello, we're going to do a little impromptu scene here. I have a few moments. And what it's going to be is a northern light scene. I always love doing that type of effect with our lighthouse down below. So this one's looking like a daytime scene. We're going to do it in a nighttime type of format. Maybe put a little bit of a light up in that lighthouse with a beam. Beam or not, I don't know. I'm not sure. Sure. But the northern lights, the type of curtainy type of formation up top. And I thought that would be pretty cool in a vertical, elongated. I don't call this a slim line, a little bit too wide for that, but half page. Five and a half by eight and a half right here. So let's give this a shot and see how it comes out. Um, we're going to do this in dye-based inks because I want to be able to color my lighthouse with some alcohol inks here. Hello, bugs! How are you this afternoon? Okay, so let's see. Uh, glossy cardstock, if I didn't mention that. And we'll use a quote stamp. I already pre stamped my quote stamp and uh, matted it here. Uh, I might have been a little bit. Uh, quick on that because I think I smeared some of that white ink. <laughs> but I was anxious to get to some of this uh, stamping portion of it. So let's just see how this goes. Okay, so I'm going to do all this ahead of time here. For me, um, the thing about having kind of open imagery under a Northern Lights type of thing, normally I like to use my whole composition right here and in, in the background for that Northern Light type of um, texturing and coloring. But I'm going to have this imagery down here, so I'm going to have to figure out the separation between those two areas. Okay, so Seaside Cove small. Hello, Linda B. I'm well, thanks. Hope you're well too, uh, Linda. If anyone else happens to jump on, or if you're watching this in replay, thanks so much for checking out the scene, the experiment. Okay, let's see. Let me get this a little bit more. I wouldn't call it centered, but um, on my previous one, I stamped it a little bit more to the left and off the page. Not a lot of it, but you know, a decent amount of it. All right. So we have our little beacon right here, but all these different types of things are kind of visual signals looking up and then we're gonna have our Northern Light type of thing up here. And again, I don't wanna go down, have my streaks all the way down here. I don't think so. I think I might use a cloud barrier um, to create some separation. Let me just try to think of what color do I wanna use for this. Um, Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. I'm going to be putting these streaks of color down here, and it's going to get... Um, well, I was going to say, it's going to get kind of dark down here, and I don't want those streaks going into my um, structuring right here. I could have a little bit of it, but I think it might be more interesting to have a little bit of separation, and I'm going to be able to do that a little bit easier with a little bit of a barrier behind there. It could be a horizon glow or something like that, but um, I think let's go for a little bit of a textural difference here. Hello, Sam Hawkins. Good day to you. Thanks for jumping on. I'm going to use a bottle green here. I was thinking about using blue, but let's go with the bottle green. It just because I haven't used that color for an impression in it seems like a long time. I don't know when. <clears throat> and let's see, let's wipe off. Ooh, that pad looks super juicy. The pads that I don't use for a long time, they sit around, but they're still pretty juicy. Um, okay, so I'm wiping off the bottom of this. I'm going into this probably three quarters an inch all around the perimeter like this, okay? So that when I stamp it out, if I am getting close to my structures or something like that, it's going to be a much lighter, um, kind of anemic version of it because it's going to be so dry there. So I, I just need to be careful. Well, let me see on this side, I didn't take off too much ink. Let's take off a little bit more. 
So it's going from wet to dry, okay? And it's the driest around on the far perimeters. Hello, Froggy Fresh. Okay, let's see here. Hello, Rhonda. <laughs> Glad you like the new ones. I'm having so much fun uh, experimenting with them. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so masking off. Easiest masking we'll ever do. Uh, let me go a little bit closer here. It's always, how thick of the masking paper are you going to be using? Okay. As far as, like, how close to put it to your object so that we don't get that big, you know, white space in between. Um, background impression and foreground impression. They're all in the same plane, I know, but... Uh, you know, what represents the background in this case. Okay, so let's see. Let's go with another, go right around. This is your cloud technique. Just take off a lot of ink around the perimeter for easy blending. Do it with a dry paper towel though, not with a wet paper towel, as you should be removing all your ink, okay? You don't have to do this on everything. I'm just working around um, an object, you know, so I have to be, Mindful about not, um, you know, stamping into those open areas. If this was the um, light rocks and waves or something like that, that's a little bit more solid. You know, you don't have to worry about any of this. Okay, and. Um, Sometimes when people used to look at, you know, stamps sold all used to be um, wood mounted at one point in time, back in the old days. <laughs> and when people would look at the stamp right here, they would say, oh, well, I don't know if I want, you know, like a stormy cloud like that. You know what I mean? But <laughs> um, I know some people might, still might think that, you know, but that's when you stamp it out in black, you know, if you stamp it out and, you know. A light blue that's not you know what i mean it's a different looking cloud so you know uh one thing about nature designs and whatnot you can often define the characteristic of them the emotional characteristic by um the it's the color that you stamp it out in but it's really you know even more so the value that you stamp it out in darker the higher contrast you know so when i'm doing you know, Halloween types of uh, scenes. This cloud is often being used in um, black. I just realized this um, bottle green right here, it l <laughs> I thought that looked like a kind of blackish right there, and that one looks real black. It's because I thought, you know, these two pads look the same to me. Can you tell that one's green and that one's black right there? So anyways, we have black and you know, green clouds here, oh well. All right, so there's our structure right there. It's the same structure as this one, you know? But this one's gonna be in kind of an emerald green um, color scheme, because I really like that um, kind of uh, color scheme for my um, northern lights. There's different colored northern lights, but uh, I've always liked the emerald green colored scheme and uh, you know, it just happens that, you know, some of the rural borealis types of, uh, you know, formations are often in that tone. Okay, so any green tones, you know, distressings, whatever, whatever brand you have, stamping up, go ahead and use them. Um, but I'm picking out a range of values right here. I mean, this one would go more like this, but um, if you don't have certain types of, uh, you know, a, a big green color scheme, you can just use your blue tones like that, okay? This one's blue right here, it looks black. But you just use your yellow underneath all that, right? 
and yellows and blues mixed to form green, so in a sense that you would get more of this type of color scheme. This one right here is an olive, you're not going to get it from these um, tones right here, but uh, mix and match, you know, use whatever. Uh, just as long as you're doing, if you're doing it in this technique right here, you're just using um, dye-based inks, okay? So you're not going to mix and match and put you know, like a dye-based ink um, yellow and a blue, you know, pigment ink or something like that, you know, stays on or something of that sort. Hello, Kay. Good to see you. Glad you liked the lighthouse. You did like that lighthouse, huh, Froggy? First from the time you saw it on the, uh, kind of the, uh, the introduction video. It's fun. It's, it's, it, this one was fun. So, you know, for me right here, uh, first experiment right there. I have a lot of different things in mind. I really want to use it with the, uh, nighttime sky on the, uh, holographic printable vinyl too. just block it out down here, stamp out that lighthouse under lighthouse under the stars. Um, but I wanted to get to this one, uh, first the, uh, Aurora Borealis. They tend to be nice and dramatic looking scenes. Let's start off with a fresh paper towel here. Take a paint brush and run over, run it over your ink pad a couple times to fill that gap. Good idea there. Hope you had a nice vacation there, Rhonda. Oh, green clouds tornado, huh? Hmm. Not making a tornado stamp. Some people kind of create those kind of vortexy tornado-ish looks with um, After Effects, you know, the painting and everything like that applied over everything. All right, so I could just go on here directly with um, green tones right off the bat, but I think I'm going to use more of a, a neutral yellow. Okay, neutral meaning that there's no oranges or reds in there going towards the uh, orange tones because I don't think that would mix really, you know, well with the green tones unless it was really pale. All right, so I'm just going to start off with this one. I've seen green clouds before. I've seen green clouds in twilight colors. It was in Santa Barbara. I was eating at an outdoor cafe. And I'm from that area, but the um, the uh, colors in um, I don't know, Santa Barbara are really different from 45 minutes north of there, really, where I grew up. Okay, so these are going to be my curtains. Okay, so the, we want these negative space areas. Those are going to be the curtains, okay? But um, I'm going to use more of this yellow uh, than uh, what would seemingly be enough for those curtains because I have so many other colors to come. So I don't know if I'm going to have too much white, uh, the retention of white in here. Um, in terms of the end result, okay? And the reason being is because as I move through my progression of values, I use less and less of them. So you have to have a really good solid foundation with your lightest of tones, okay? All right, so on these clouds, I'm going to have them illuminated right here, and then my ocean waves in here. This is going to supposed to be a really, you know, deep into the night scene. So, um, you know, the colors on my objects are going to be reflective of the colors that are, you know, shining, the light colors that are shining onto the surface of these objects. So uh, you could make them different colors, but I'm just going to go with a monotone color scheme. Okay. Now you don't have to get this perfectly um, applied in here. Like I might want to retain some areas in here for specific types of colorings and shading. And that's just easier done with um, um, markers, um, alcohol markers in this case. 
you know, this is not a detailed, you know, applicator. You can see where I'm picking up some of that black from the, uh, the impressions too. This is going to get so um, colored in though that it's not really going to matter um, if this is getting a little bit smudgy. We have a lot of darker colors to come. Oh, glad you received those um, stamps, Linda. I did do some tracking on it last night and I did notice that it's, I think that went to, it's, it was interesting. Your parcel, I think went to, I don't know, it went to like Alberta first, I think, and then back over to BC, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, tornadoes don't have a, a real good, uh, you know, people don't have like good associations with the tornadoes and uh, tornado uh, country. <laughs> I guess you can say that for lightning too. If people live in the mountains and in, uh, you know, wildfire-prone areas too. But looking forward to seeing what you do with those, uh, Linda. Okay, let's see here. Let's get a little bit more down here. Okay, now here's what I'm doing here too. Okay, so see all this is colored, and I can add more and more of this yellow down here, and it's not going to get any darker. I do try to achieve like a, a full saturation using this color right here, but what I'm doing right here now is I'm just kind of saturating the surface of the paper a little bit, or a lot, and um, that level of moisture on the surface and in the pulp. I mean, this is dried at the touch like this, you know, right now, but it, it is, it, I'm getting a little bit of buildup and that makes the blending of these other colors um, to come so much easier, especially when I get into, you know, my darker tones like this. I don't want to get these big streaky looking applications of it. So as one person put it years ago when they were uh, kind of asking about it, they said, so you're just, you're kind of lubricating the page. And I thought, oh yeah, that's a pretty good uh, description. All right, let's see if this even shows up. This green right here, can you see that little bit of green? That's, I could use that, but that's not um, showing up so much. If you can't see kind of, you know, some additional, value like that at all, then just move to your next tone, you know. Um, you don't have to go, there's no set number of uh, inks that you have to use on here. And as I go through and I add, um, you know, increasingly darker tones, like I said before, I, I use less and less of them. So you, you use a kind of a, a decreasing um, amount of uh, application with each darker tone. You got, you, you know, it, you play it by ear though. It's not like, well, wait a minute, you know, so I covered uh, whatever, 90% with the yellow. So it, the next one has to be like a 85 or, you know what I mean? It's not like that. You know, you just kind of watch it. And it's, it's, it's really more so when you get into your darkest of tones, okay? So you can get that real kind of feathery, kind of curtain-y look to it, okay? You can't really see the curtains in here. You see a little bit, I've kind of left some areas, like there's these three kind of fingers right here, and those will probably be um, uh, the beams um, in the end result. And, you know, the whole thing about this one is keeping it kind of streaky, you know, so streaks are good in this case. We're going horizontal streaks across this body of water down here, okay? And you go with the vertical ones up top for the uh, um, you know, the northern lights um, texturing. If you ever get to a certain point and you think, hey, I, you know, it looks a little anemic or something like that, then go back to your lightest of tone and layer that right over the top of it again. The more absorbent your paper, um, 
the more the look changes from a wet application to a dry one, okay? So sometimes you have to go back and add um, another layer of your lightest tones right over the top of it. And that makes it kind of glow a little bit more. It depends on the brand of inks and things like that too. And then spray sealing always helps, okay? All right, let's see, let's go with this one. Jungle green. You can kind of test it out here, but watch how easy this kind of streaks in here. See this right here? And that's from having this page a little bit moist, okay? These wet applications really apply very nice and smoothly. And, I, and I, when I'm doing this, I'm kind of going with this type of motion. We're coming out like that. I'm not going like this and then up, okay? It's like you're, you know, adding these wisps into your uh, surface. Now, Northern Lights, normally, you know, you have this darkness up here and there's this curtainy type of hanging thing up here. I usually have it where it's a little bit more um, kind of lighter on the horizon, just in terms of my application process, because a lot of times I have uh, darker objects down here, trees. And if I have it real dark, at the, you know, behind the trees, we're not going to be able to see the silhouette of the trees. So that's where my uh, difference is. But on this one, we have some lighter tones. So maybe I will come up from the base here like this and do a little bit of this, you know, bottom curtain area with uh, at least some of these um, green values here. I seem to have a little bit of a a different movement to my hand today instead of just going straight down. It's kind of curling over, which is fine. All right, so there we go right there. You can just kind of see it starting to kind of happen, you know, a little bit of a glow starting to um, appear. Glossy cardstock, Rhonda. Remember to, on these ones, it's probably a good idea to spray seal. Um, I do it, you know, I, I haven't always done this in the past, but I'm pretty convinced that if we spray seal our pieces before they're completely dry, you know. It's not like you have to run out, you know, side, you know, right after doing this or anything like that. But uh, I'm convinced that it, I, I think there's a little bit more of a retention of value and uh, intensity um, when spray sealing, when, when uh, you know, still a, a little bit um, damp. All right, so here's the, a light green from Mari. If you don't have um, like pads for every, you know, whatever, all these different colors, you can just get um, re-inkers for um, whatever colors you want to apply. If you're just using the colors to apply ink with, if you're not making impressions with certain types of colors, um, and if you want to save money, just buy the re-inker because there's a lot more re-inker fluid in, in a bottle than in the pad, okay? So, I, I mean, I use this. This is convenient just to go like that and ink on here. But a lot of the more recent different colors that I'm getting, um, yeah, I'm running out of space here too. So I just have a bunch of different uh, colors, you know, just in re-inker form because I just put a couple drops on my applicator and I apply it like that, okay? I have enough pads now um, for my impression things and my impressions aren't always in black okay they're in colors but um but i i just get the uh, the re-inker you kind of have to remember you know what colors you have though too i don't have a, a gazillion ink pads um, but i have a fair share and um Anyways, I'm bringing this up because, like, Marvy pads aren't available anymore, but you can probably get the number 11 light green 
And for me, this light green, there's certain colors of Marvy pads. Marvy pads in general, color inks, they're generally the brightest of versions of, you know, certain colors. They're usually brighter than, I would say, just about any other brand that I've seen out there. So this lime greenish tone, it's probably brighter than most other lime green equivalent pads out there. It's the same hue, but this one it just has a stronger intensity um, and vibrancy. So, you know, that really kind of glows in there like that. You can see that down here. Okay. But this is, you know, of course, this is in combination with these other colors too. Okay. So not every color I'm, you know, saying, but just in general, you know, Marvy seems to, you know, go for pretty bright um, incarnations. I don't want super bright incarnations all the time too. I want more kind of muted and earthy ones. So I like using them in conjunction with uh, like distress inks and everything like that. Glad you like it, cat. Nice uh, blended values, huh? So that's one of those things I'm going for here too. You know, we're going for this illusion that light is coming from within the card, right? Because we're not dealing with light here. We're dealing with contrast. And um, when layering transparent colors, you know, it can potentially look richer and richer because those colors underneath are showing through the colors that have laid on top. So I'm not like physically blending colors together. Okay, they're just being layered one over the other. And like in glazes or something like that, you know, it's like glazing, a, you know, a turkey or whatever, you know what I mean? It just uh, when you keep glazing something, anything, um, pottery and ceramics, the deeper and richer it, it can potentially get, depending on, you know, what colors you're using, what, you know, what types of colors if they're transparent. So here's this green right here. Let's see if we can get it any deeper using more of that. Okay. Oh, if you ever do this type of process too for your layering tone like this, there's some combinations of colors that where it's like, I might go through like three or four and it's like, eh, just not getting there. And then you get to that one color or something like that the third, the fourth, whatever, and then it starts to resonate. Or sometimes, like I was saying, you go back to the previous color and lay that over the top, like maybe that yellow or something like that again, and then it pops, okay? So, and you know, at no point in time can you not go back and add in, you know, additional tones or something like that. Or let's say you get, you go on here with a dark color and it's like, oh my God, I got this really harsh line like that. Sometimes people try to blend it out using that color, which you can do, but another thing that's a little bit easier and more graceful is to go back to your other lighter colors, could be the lightest color, could be the midtones, and then you layer those over the top of it, you know, as more of a transition color, okay? Because if you get a harsh streak, it means that there's so much contrast between the color that you're adding and the background. So instead of making the background like darker and darker and darker using that existing color, what you do is you make the background a little bit darker, cutting down the contrast between that mark that you don't really like okay or it looks obtrusive or something like that and not graceful so in other words just keep working it you know it's what this is what i always tell people you know a lot of times um it it it, it it's almost always been the case i don't know 98 percent of the time sometimes when people show me something that oh my god this card went off the uh, the rails, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm about to toss it out or something like that. I look at it and I just think, you know, almost every time, because I've run into the same types of things, um, it just needs more. It needs more color. It needs more layering or something like that, um, you know, to make it really pop and get vibrant or blending of image, you know, parts together or something like that. Let's see. Oh, hello in Perth. <laughs> hey, we saw uh, in a in a what was I think it was the uh, the midnight um, the midnight. Uh, I think it was this one right here. Someone else was joining in it uh, from Australia. Let's see. Hello, the life the life. Uh, Ava, good to see you. Hello in Janesville, Wisconsin, Bonnie. St. Louis. 
I taught in St. Louis once. I didn't teach in St. Louis. I said in St. Charles, right? St. Charles is like the right next to St. Louis, right? I taught from uh, Columbia, right? And then St. Genevieve, and I went back up to St. Charles. That was a great trip. I don't know why I always remember that one. I, I used to teach everywhere. I have a really bad memory, I'm saying, you know, but I remember that one very distinctly for some reason. Oh, and I saw the greatest lightning storm in Missouri that I've ever seen. I think it's because I didn't have, it occurred to me because I didn't have a bunch of like mountains and you know, like terrain, you know, driven from St. Uh, Louis over to uh, Columbia at night. I was like, oh my God, you know. It was such a dramatic uh, drive. I loved it. I mean, it was driving in a storm, but, um, and I was loving life seeing that. So cool. It's like lightning bolt from horizon to horizon. Sideways. <laughs> I think I stamped a scene out in, uh, whatever, in memory of that too one time. Instead of stamping my lightning bolts kind of coming down all the time, I did it like this, you know, where it's like going this way. Or maybe I did it like both coming out like that. All right, so this is, okay, so this is what I was talking about. Um, if you just joined in, I was just mentioning, if you don't have a you know, a big range of green tones or something like that. And with this process of blending, you know, you can always add, you know, different tones of blue, right? But you have the yellow base, and because blue and yellow mix to form green, you just use your blue tones, but have your yellow as base, and then you'll have all green tones, you know, um, as far as the, the look of it. All right, let's see. See, we're getting a little bit more of that curtainy type of look right here. Now, this blue, I'm what I'm also judging right now is if um, the blue is um, looks adding that. Does it make it look darker too? Okay, it's changing the hue a little bit, not so much to where it looks turquoise or anything like that, but. See, so yeah, I'm using this as kind of like a shading um, color, um, as well as, you know, just a, another green toning type of thing. So making these rocks a little bit darker. This is kind of like a mid-tone color, mid-range color, you know, in terms of the value scale, zero, 50%, 100%, you know, being black. This one, this color right here is, it's called um, light blue, you know, which I, that color should not be called light blue. It should be like, I don't know, whatever, cobalt or something like that. All right, here's um, a bit of Caribbean blue. I don't know if this Caribbean blue is going on its own and in blue scenes. Okay, so this is right up here. It's two different colors of blue, okay? Um, more of a neutral, but do you see this right down here in the water where it's a little bit more of a warm blue? That's the Caribbean blue right there. So if you have a little bit of a uh, kind of light turquoise or something like that, in distress, you can use, um, well, I don't know if the tumbled glass, not really, that's not really a warm blue. It is kind of a crystalline, there might be a touch of warmth in it. I don't know if it's like super neutral. Okay, I, no, this one's, this one's affecting it a little bit. It's minute, but, you know, if you have it, use it. If you don't, then don't. See, I'll put a little bit of a streak in that area right there in that light white area. I'm leaving some of it, you know, untouched because I'm, it's just going to be easier to come in there and get it with the, uh, um, alcohol pens and, you know, some of the more detailed areas. Let me come up from the base here a little bit more like this. Actually it looks better in there, doesn't it? With that uh, blue like that. Okay, uh, you notice I did switch to this paper towel here just because I switched. This was a lighter tone, 
than this one. So if I'm going from dark to light, back to light, you know, I don't want to pollute the lighter tone with a darker value, okay? But as long as you keep working like darker and darker and darker, um, you know, no need to switch. It's like, you know, if it's within the same kind of value here, you know, whatever, color family. All right, so this is Prussian blue. This is getting pretty dark. Well, let's see. Uh, let's go back to, let's do this um, bottle green again. The bottle green is what I stamped out those clouds in right there. Okay, now if you just joined in, one of the things I did with the cloud, and this is where I'm getting to right now, I stamped out these clouds, but when I inked it up, I took a paper towel and I wiped off the perimeter like this, okay? Pretty good. I, I really dabbed off like this section up top here, pretty hard on the rubber portion, okay? So that it's drier up here, so that when I stamp out the impression, I don't get this hard rectangular line. So if I had this hard rectangular line right there, my challenge right now would be blending in that rectangular line, which means I would have to get um, darker down here. So see, this is much lighter right here. So I think that looks fine as is. So I don't have to do nearly as much blending at this point in time. So I really just eradicated that need just by wiping this off around the perimeter like that, stamping it out lighter to begin with so that it just inherently blends in with that surrounding area. Not, you know, not against a white piece of paper, but against these tones that are already laid down here. It's enough, you know, I think. Let's see, let's add in a few little harder streaks like that, just to make things look a little bit streakier like that. And then I'm gonna come up from the top. Now this is where we're getting kind of dark like this. Okay, so see, I want those kind of curtain-y types of things. The, the blends have been fairly smooth, but I do want that kind of fingery looking, I don't know, feathered look, I guess. So I'm taking this and I'm kind of going like, this with it, okay? As opposed to just, you know, smooth application like that. I mean, I want, you know, I want it, some of it smooth, but I also want it a little bit streakier. So what you can also do is you can take this and you go on the side and you go like, like that. So you get a more narrow kind of line like that and see where it's kind of, you know, looks a little bit more kind of that feathered kind of, uh, um, curtain-y look like that. All right. And then let's go to, that was the bottle green. Bottle green's pretty dark. Let's go to Prussian blue. Prussian blue is almost, at some angles, it almost looks black. So you can see how much darker that is. See that right there? The darker you take your perimeter, the lighter, the lighter areas are gonna seem, okay? So sometimes you don't just add dark colors into a scene because you want it darker. It's because you want whatever's remaining that's lighter than it to look lighter, okay? So if you want that to look one step lighter by contrast, you make other areas within your scene one step darker. Because we're not dealing with light, you're dealing with contrast here. You know, there's no lights that are in, you know, inherently in this white piece of paper, so. So you're just dealing with contrast, okay? So sometimes, you know, you might make a scene, oh my God, I made it too dark. We'll just make some area of it a little bit darker and then the rest of it will seem one step lighter or you can make two steps darker in an area. You don't have to make it darker everywhere, but you just bring that into it. And again, by contrast, you know. Um, here's, oh, here, here's a application tip, okay? Certain types of papers, like glossy cardstocks too, they're not all created the same. And um, 
certain types of inks are thicker, okay? So you might be trying to apply your inks on here. And it's like, oh my God, it's just not applying. It's almost like when you're trying to apply the next tone, you're removing ink because it's sitting on the surface of the paper. So just let it set up a little bit. You can heat set a little bit, but don't make it dry because you still want to be able to blend this in really easily, okay? So just let it let it set up, you know, go walk away for a couple minutes. It's not going to take like 10 minutes, you know, or something like that, or it shouldn't. I don't know. It depends how thick your inks are. Um, you know, and just go right back to it, you know, let it, let it, let it dry by absorption and by evaporation. Probably the colder it is or something like that. Maybe the more humid it is, maybe it dries a little bit, you know, it might be different in... You know, especially with this amount of ink that's on here, it might be different in, you know, the summertime than winter or something like that, you know, in terms of the drying time. It's like, oh my God, I did this before and I don't remember it being so hard to apply. It might be just a different time of year, you know, with the whatever relative, you know, humidity, you know, level. All right, so this right here, so we went with the Prussian blue and it's looking a lot lighter across those, I think. And let's go to black here, okay. Okay, now here's where, um, a lot of times with black, um, people get really harsh marks because they don't keep it moving, okay? The, they kind of just stay in one area like this, okay? So it's like this really harsh black right there, okay? But here, I'll do it on a piece of uh, blank paper here. Uh, let me see. And uh, let me just use a piece of scratch paper right here. So when you're coming in like this, okay, so see this right here? So I'm adding this down. This is just copy paper right here, okay? So I'm adding it down like that, but then kind of keep it moving like this. See this right here? So that's what you're kind of going for right there. But see what I'm talking about, sometimes people go like this and then they don't move their applicator. You know, they do it on all the other colors, but sometimes when they get to the darkest tone, so it's this really harsh edge blob like that, as opposed to kind of, you know, keeping it moving like that. Keep it moving. <laughs> hey, that was your color in the kitchen in your kitchen in the '60s, huh? Yeah, the uh, those uh, green, the olive kind of green tones, and uh, what was that? Uh, the peachish other color that was really big in the '60s. Those kind of made a comeback, you know. Uh, those uh, those palettes, huh? I don't know if they're still around. Let's see. Hello, Cecile. Uh oh, Cecile. I hope you're. Uh, hope you're whatever your uh, whatever's ailing heals uh, soon. Maybe it's like that downtime, you know, you can kind of conceive of some, uh, you know, new things and applications so that when you start <clears throat> doing the stamping again, you know, it's like you got this floodgate of, uh, you know, kind of whatever inspiration that needs to, you know, be let out. <laughs> All right, so I like this black here to um, frame off the perimeter. Okay, so I'm going to be adding a decent amount of this, but again, I'm going to try to keep it um, transitioning. If any of you have ever watched or you know heard me talk about um, easy coloring schemes, okay? Now this is, you know, I'm using a lot of ink on this one, okay? But the colors, the lighting scheme on this, I should say not color scheme, but lighting scheme, it's still, there's lightness up here. And then I'm separating it here. See, here's this area of tone that's coming in here. I have it block, you know, not going through the lighthouse because that's here, but this area right in here is generally darker, okay? In terms of my color application, you can see it here in the rocks. And it's light down here. 
it's the reflective light coming from up here. So it's light, dark, light. Now, again, I know that I have a white lighthouse in there, so I'm not going to block that all out, you know. But just in general, light and reflected light, and that's just your lighting dialogue. You have light, you know, light source up here, and it's being reflected somewhere down here. In this case, I'm kind of breaking up that light source into three. If I was doing like a general horizon or something like that, I would have these, and you can turn these like on end like this and have the streaks going across that way. That would look more like a natural sky. You can do it in other colors. It doesn't have to be, you know, emerald green or something like that. It could be blues or whatever. You can see, almost see it right here. Here is kind of a, an area up here. It's, you know, generally light right in here, right? You know, right in my class. And then this lighter area just right across here. And then it's light down here again. I have a little bit of light down here. I've broken this up because I have sand. But as far as your lighting schemes go, your lighting schemes within your scenes can be very, very, you know, basic. And it's really applicable in, I don't know. You could do that same basic thing in 98% of scenes, you know, there's going to be a little bit of, you know, things where you break up one area of light into two or something like that, but it's, it's still the same concept. Okay, let me show you something here too. Uh, the benefit of laying down, you know, a lot of those other colors in here. Let me go with the like horrible technique right here, okay? Um, let me just take this and I'll go like this with a hard applicate. Can you see that right there a little bit? Okay. Now see that right there, that big blob of ink, it just blended right out because the paper is a little bit moist. Okay. So if I do that on a dry piece of paper like this, now this is matte paper, you know, that's fixed, you know what I mean? So you have a little bit of saturation in there. So you make the process real easy for yourself by kind of saturating your page, okay? And then it becomes very, very user-friendly. If you get something that you don't like with the black ink, it just kind of blends in like that. If you get now, if I have it right, right in here, it might leave a harsh mark. But you know, I'm not gonna go like that with it. If you're gonna get some kind of harsh mark, it's going to probably be in your darker areas because those, that's where those areas are. But they really just blend right out. If you're using a lot of really thick inks, you know, you can almost remove it too, okay? But I think that is it in terms of, uh, you know, tone additions. Let me try something here. Um, let me go with, uh, where was that paper towel that I was just using? Oh yeah, right here. This is looking, looking a little bit too kind of, I don't know, symmetrical. Let's, let's just alter one of these a little bit. Okay. So if I don't know what I, if, you know, if, if what I want right here, then I'll just start it in a little bit of a darker area like this. Okay. And then I'll just slowly creep this over a little bit like that. See, this one's getting a little bit darker like that. Actually, I'm coming up and I, I'm removing some of that black right up there. I don't know if you can see that right up there. Here, let me keep doing that. That looks pretty cool, actually. Do you see that? I don't know if you can see that, what happened right here. See this right here? I removed black with that ink. So it was a little bit different. Let me see, that's still looking a little bit kind of hot right in there. Let's let's mute that out a little bit more. Sometimes sometimes I'm tapping it to build up ink. Yeah, now see it's a little bit more of that bluish tinge like that. Okay. Yeah, it's come down here a little bit too with that. So see that little bluish area is kind of reflecting down here in the water. 
Let's see. Let me. I like that. Let me come over here a little bit more too. The area that's really cool is like right in in these areas right in there. So that kind of glow. Oops, my camera is kind of overcompensating. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. See, it's like in these areas that I really uh like that look right in there. All right. Hello, Jeline. Orbs, let's see. What orbs, uh, Linda? Okay, let's see here. I've got a bunch of uh, paper towel crumbs all over my piece. That's what I'm kind of wiping off right here. All right. So while moist and everything, you know, these, you know, it's relatively dry to the touch. You can see my fingertips right here from this type of exercise. Thank you, your fingertips, hands, everything. The better the, the cards usually come out. <laughs> Which is kind of true in many ways. I was, you know, over over the years of observing, uh, not that, you know, people with like really clean hands, you know, aren't doing, but, uh, you know, great work. But um, I just noticed that sometimes, you know, that, I don't know, the, the people that had like the inkiest of fingers, you know, uh, thinking back at the pieces that they created in class, it seemed like, you know, there was a, a good deal of kind of fluidity to um, their applications just because they were using, you know, it, pro it was probably, you know, it's the quantity of ink, I guess, you know, so in theory, you know, the, the more ink you use, potentially, you know, the, the richer the end kind of color scheme. All right, I'm just using some uh, pebbles, uh, tiny rocks down here. It's the same rocks that were used down in this area. This scene right here, I stamped out using um, stays on ink. And again, I, I, I did this one in dye-based inks just because I wanted to um, have the ability to go in here and add in some tones. Uh, using my alcohol pens. We need like a like a solvent ink pad that won't smear with dye based inks, but you can use alcohol or over the top of it, and it won't, you know, kind of bring the uh, the imagery, put the imagery back into solution. Uh, we want it all <laughs> in, in our craft, huh? Okay, so this is a little bit of a lime, not lime green, but pale green, melon. Okay, so I'm just going with the colors out of my color scheme here. If we have green lighting, you know, within a scene, then white objects are going to look, you know, that color, okay? Barring, you know, some other type of light reflecting off of it, so. I'm just bringing some of this in. Some of it already has some color because I... You know, I went over it with my paper towel a little bit, you know, some of those lighter tones. Um, here's more of a blue. It's like a real pale blue too, okay? And I'm just kind of reiterating the, the shading convention of the lighthouse. You know, I want the, the face of it to be a little bit lighter probably and the sides of it to be a little bit darker maybe. You can see this rounded portion is darker on the left hand side so I'm just kind of creating a little bit of a transition using this lighter blue. Let's hit this underneath my waves down here to make the waves a little bit more dimensional. This is a super light blue but I'm kind of building up my colors, my values starting from light to dark just like I did in the sky. Here's a pretty dark uh, light Bright green, okay. Let's come into this. I don't think I want to use this. This is almost too bright for my lighthouse. I don't want it too, you know, intense. But see, I'm coming with 
this underneath my the crest of the waves. You can get in, you know, these little areas with the, you know, fine tip like this so much easier. Here's um, kind of a mid-tone blue. Eh, maybe it's more like a 25%, so not super, you know, dark or mid-tone-ish. So mixing that with the green will create, create a little bit of a mid-tone color on the lighthouse, like this. Okay, so what's going through in my mind right now, I'm thinking about toning this out. If I tone this out a little bit darker, it'll make that light in the background stand out a little bit more. Let's see, in some of these clouds, you know, where I didn't get, you know, a super great masking, and I never do. I'll just bring some of this color right against, you know, where there's a little bit of a gap between my impression and, uh, you know, that background. Uh, texturing. Oops, I, I think I added too much there. So this is dye-based um, ink, so I'll just go back in with my lighter blue like this. Or where's an even lighter one? Oh, I hardly ever use it. Here's my blender pen. I'll just come in with my blender and lighten that up a little bit. Yeah, I'll blend it all in there. <laughs> all right, so that is that. Let's see. Let's go on with. Oh, know, there's all these colors that I hardly ever use. Let me try this one right here. It's a little bit of blue, but over the top of green, it just reads as green, but it is a little bit darker like that. See, adding that underneath is crest of those waves make the way makes the waves stand out a little bit more I add colors that you'd never think of uh, candy sometimes I'm not thinking of it either you know I'm just grabbing stuff I'm grabbing them in terms of kind of values of them it's like okay that's kind of this similar color but it's just darker you know what I mean so I'm really thinking about, in this case, I'm thinking about it in terms of values, okay? Not so much the color of it. I mean, I'm not going to grab like a red or something like that. But it's just, I'm looking at it in terms of light and dark. And if it's roughly in the same color scheme, I, you know, I give it a try. Okay, this is a little, this one's nice. This one's a little bit of like an olive green. So I put it underneath those waves and I put some of it over in this area too. Oh, okay. So here's another area that I can use it. See at the base of these rocks right here. Let's go in and kind of add that in there. My, uh, one of my art professors was saying that a lot of times the, uh, the brightest of colors are in the shadows, you know, because they're not getting kind of washed out with um, lighting. He was talking about more like a, you know, a night, you know, a daytime scene. Or painting or whatever. We didn't really do landscapes, but. All right, so there's that. I think I can go a little bit darker in those um, rocks. Let's let's bring a little bit of more of an earthy look to it. Let's go with the. It's like a little bit of a darker kind of olive. All right, this isn't showing up at all. I guess the the background was already darker than that. So, let's go to. Ooh, this one might be kind of insane. Let's see what it looks like. And I'll just blend it out. Okay, that's super harsh right there, but I'm just kind of adding it down in these areas to um, to blend it out, you know, to mix it like that while it's still wet. Um, Glossy cardstock, it's staying on the surface, but it does start to absorb in there where it becomes harder to kind of um, blend out the longer it is allowed to sit. 
Okay. But if you hit it relatively quickly, you can kind of blend it out as if it was on, you know, I don't know, those other types of papers that, you know, allow for a lot of uh, blending at whatever given time. Um, photo papers are that way. You can let it sit and it sits on that emulsion for a really long time. And um, you can really blend it out. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to add these bushes down here. I've been using the reeds, but I want to use something a little bit more. Oh. A little bit less directional, but the reeds look great down here. I just wanted something different because I've been using those reeds on everything. Okay, so I'm just going to add this in the foreground right here. And should I do it in Stazon or should I do it in a dye-based ink is the question. It, maybe either would be fine. But sometimes when I'm thinking about stamping over alcohol ink, which has been laid down here now, sometimes I'm wondering if the dye-based, water-based dye-based ink is going to adhere to it where the Stazon would... Uh, you know, adhere to it with no problem. Uh, okay, let's just use this one. I was going to go with that stays on. My answer was stays on, but I was thinking, okay, I might have to re-ink my stays on pad. And, uh, you know, it's just too much work. <laughs> Okay, allow the ink to transfer over. I was mentioning this to someone um, that was stamping something in a pretty thick style of ink. I'm not sure what their surface they were using, but if you're going with the pigment ink onto kind of a less than, you know, absorbent surface, like super absorbent, like a matte, you know, piece of paper, cardstock or something like that. And if it's with, with really solid, you know, law, you know, wide surface, um, solid area surface, you have to hold your stamp down a little longer for that ink to transfer over there to start absorbing into the service or and or um setting up so it's like setting up as you're holding this like that so with the brilliance ink in particular it, it would start drying you know before you pull this up because if you if you're going wet into a surface that's a little bit less absorbent and you lift it up too fast it's like a vacuum it's like all that ink might be still stuck on your stamp and they were trying to use um you know a pretty solid based image i'd have to see uh see it and find out what surface she was using though but i i suggested that she just hold stamp and hold and allow that ink to dry you know a little bit longer before they lift it up and you know to allow that transfer to take place okay so that worked out okay I don't know if the stays on would be darker black or not. See that right there? These kind of things kind of frame off your side like that. It makes this interior in here look a little bit um, lighter by contrast. Again, um, it's hitting some of that contrasting value um, with the imagery and not, you don't have to just get that contrasting um, tone just only using color applications, okay? You can do it with imagery like that. All right, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this still. Let's see, let's see if this, I'm gonna frame this. I think that looks pretty good like that, that quote stamp, I don't know. It's blocking off some of this, but I'm gonna frame this off and, uh, or mat this off and mount it, but Okay, so I haven't used this in a long time, but uh, let's go with some of this bleed proof white right here. And let's get some stars up here. <laughs> That's funny, Nicole.
Hello, buddy Cheryl. Good to see you. All right. Yeah, I haven't used this in a while. This is a uh, my uh, bleed Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. It's a uh, an opaque watercolor paint. I and it's all hardened in there, so you just kind of reconstitute the little bit of the top of it. If you don't use this too often, you have to kind of add water every time you use it, okay? It's not like a tube of paint or something like that. You know, it's this is designed to, you know what I mean? You have to get the right consistency. Or a, con I know, you just have to have it, you know, reasonably watery, okay? And uh, like, men are like, maybe like thin syrup or something like that is my ideal um, consistency, okay? And you get a little bit of your um, paintbrush. I'm sopping out. I'm getting a lot of it out of the paintbrush, too. I'm just using it in this little tiny portion, like, right there. Okay? And then you get a lot of it out so you don't get a big drop of it on your piece. Okay? And then let's get a little bit of stars. So I'm going to go for um, kind of this... Milky Way looking thing in here, going at a little bit of an angle. I mean, you can give it, you know, whatever pattern you want. All right, so. All right, so, then, you know, we have that. So those little stars in there give it a lot of extra dimension, don't they? So the thing with the bleed proof white, if you ever get this, now some people, you know, you can use all kinds of different things. Um, the bleed proof white is like dry right now. Okay, if you use kind of certain types of other things, you can use like a gesso or a white watercolor. And what it would probably do is it would lay down on here, but some of that, you know, it's water-based paint. So what you might get is some of that putting the dye-based ink back into solution. So you might have like yellow and green stars in here. Okay, which might look good though, okay? Because uh, it might not dry as fast. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So the thing about the uh, the bleed proof white too is like the smallest speck of, I don't know, it's like a one one hundredth of a, I don't know, whatever, fraction of a, like a millimeter, a tenth of a millimeter or something like that, if not smaller, it's still like white, okay? And it's standing out in there. I suggest getting a bottle of that, you know, it's, it's really fantastic stuff. And then you can, you know, you can, uh, go back to, you know, childhood and, uh, do, um, splatter painting on a regular basis. <laughs> Okay, I'm shaking up my uh, 0.7 millimeter pen here. Yeah, Candy, I have to kind of mix it up a little bit um, in terms of my foregrounds, you know. I have my go-tos as well. And they'll always be, you know, probably my standard go-tos. Okay, so adding in some white paint coming off. See, these waves are lighter, right? So uh, these waves coming off the crest of the waves right here. We have these little splashy uh, textures. They kind of relate to, you know, you're kind of bringing in something um, in common to this area down here. And so, you know, these white dots represent, you know, you know, the crest of the wave, you know, the spin drift coming off the top of the wave, or, you know, but it, but they're the same compo you know, the component is up here, but these ones just represent stars. If you do, if you spray, you know, splattered over the whole thing, you know, maybe this could be a winter scene where there's, you know, these could represent stars as well as like snowfall, okay? But in here, I don't know, they're just like crashing little waves and whatnot. Kind of brings the area to life with texturing and uh, contrast. When you bring these little sparkles um, 
into a scene, you're really kind of making it, you're bringing it to life um, in terms of lighting, you know. Um, I'd really suggest playing around with this type of thing. Um, if you ever start doing this, if you haven't done um, kind of highlights before, um, sometimes people add it down and then you're focusing on like a tiny little area. You can see this right here. Um, you know, what that little sparkle and glistening type of look adds to this. Now, on something like this, it's not quite as obvious because there's not so much contrast in here. Okay. But here, let me make this one a little bit lighter on the top of the wave. But, you know, there's little touches like this. They're kind of the final touches. And sometimes um, they can enhance from a textural standpoint, from a lighting standpoint. Uh, I've had a lot of times where it kind of saved my scenes too, you know, adding in those contrasts. Because when you add these little touches like this, you're adding something that's visually more apparent, okay? It's like a top layer of texture, okay? So if you're adding another layer of texture like this into a scene, you're pushing whatever's already laid down there one step back. Okay, it might be two steps back or far, you know, three or four steps back. Like here we have the splattering up here, okay? So, you know, if we have certain areas in there that, uh, you know, weren't, uh, you know, uh, blended as much as we like, I put another layer of, you know, texturing on here, like these stars. Here I'm adding in some just larger stars, like that. And, you know, it just, it pushes the sky back a little ways um, in terms of visual distance, so. Um, yeah, it can kind of obscure. <laughs> Which I do a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of obscuring of, uh, not whole, whole scenes, sometimes whole scenes, but, you know, certainly of areas, you know, that that are a little bit kind of weaker weaker area, you know, areas of uh, my scenes, you know, so I'll say, you know, I'll like, don't look over here. So I'll put something over here. I'll darken it or something like that, or add it, you know, a little bit of a tone in that area, you know, which is fine. You know, it's all part of the kind of the process. Okay. So this is a, uh, just a cotton swab. I'm going to add, um, a little bit of tone into my lighthouse to kind of bring it to life. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to add a light beam. It's like all the lighting direction is moving upwards. I could put like a beam coming out like that, but I think it would look kind of weird. So I'm just going to give, give this little light in here a little bit of glow, like maybe the light is shining our way or something like that. Okay. So from a textural standpoint and from a lighting standpoint, you know, these adding a little bit of a brighter light like this in the light might be kind of interesting, like about like so. All right. Let's see. Let's go a little bit more. Yeah, okay, let's do some of it on these clouds as well. I don't want to add too much because there's not really too much white light remaining in this scene, if at all. So we have this lighthouse in here, so that could be the light that's kind of reflecting off some of these waves as well. So just adding a little bit of this touch on some of these waves might be good. It just kind of makes them a little bit softer looking for that textural um, contrast. Now on this one, I used a ton of, um, white pigment ink, like up in these clouds to make those clouds look really nice and soft and billowy. Okay. Cause there was a lot of white uh, remaining, um, in that scene, you know, because it's like, I don't know, whatever daytime scene. Oh, 
here, I changed my mind. I'm going to use a little bit of a cotton ball application of pigment ink. I'm going to see if I can get um, a little bit more of a glow on those um, clouds, but we'll do it just with a very light touch. Yeah, that white may be a little bit extreme. I'm going to blot some of it off there. Let's go with something like that. Here's one of the things. Um, when I spray seal this, that becomes a little bit less um, translucent. It becomes more transparent. So I'm thinking about that too here. But I think that should do it. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna spray mount this and uh, seal it off too. Okay. Yeah, the stars really add to it, don't they, Nicole? Sometimes I, I, sp <laughs> I splatter paint a little bit too much and it gets a little bit too extreme. Let me change the, my exposure of my camera here a little bit. Okay, that's better. But yeah, see, there, there's a lot more depth in that sky with that splattering. So I've been splattering too much. Actually, this star right here in the center is a little bit too much. Let me get rid of that one. So you can get rid of these stars too. If you don't like something, you just rub it off. You can take a paper towel and just, you know, wipe it off. They're, they're not so fragile that they're just going to come off, you know, just by touching it. And then when you spray seal this, it should become a little bit more um, kind of a vibrant and sealed but um let's see what did candy do candy i put dr martin's on clear on a clear stamping block when i need it i use a paintbrush with water to dilute oh that's cool all right so if anyone wants to hang around i'm going to go what i'm going to do is i'm going to spray seal this with a a krylon uh triple thick okay and then I'm going to spray, put some spray adhesive on the back of this, and I'm gonna mount it onto a piece of uh, white cardstock. Um, and then maybe again on a piece of darker cardstock. Okay, this is gonna take forever. I'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> if anyone's on at all right now. But I, I'm gonna do, I, I want to do that because I want to add in one of these quote stamps here too. I think the quote stamp's gonna look pretty cool on here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be blocking off some of this, but let's see this. I want to see this card what it looks like in uh, card context right here. All right, so I will be back in a couple minutes here. The triple thick might take a little bit of time, so I'm a little bit worried about that. But we'll do what we can. Hopefully, this won't just when I flip this over to use the spray sealant, hopefully it's not just adhered to the box that I put it in. All right. If anyone comes back, I'll say uh, back in uh, five min. <laughs>
All right, if anyone's watching, I just did this really thin kind of border right there. I didn't spray seal this. I thought, oh my God, yeah, spray sealing right now would be nuts. Um, because I would have to allow that to dry and that would just take too long. So I'll spray seal it after I'm done, but I'm gonna go outside and spray mount this on top of a piece of a dark glossy right here. Okay, so I'm gonna do this type of thing to it and trim this right now. So um, spray mounting, you know, just on these big pieces, I find it better than, um, you know, my tape runner. So it gets just much, so much more of an even uh, tack to it. All right, back in a couple minutes. All right, one more step here with my quote stamp here. This is framed off. Now I am going, I'm going to spray seal this. So one of the things about alcohol inks and dye-based inks, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a different consistency. The alcohol ink's really kind of shiny, where the dye-based inks is a little bit more, I would say matte on the glossy, but you can tell the different um, textural qualities. So if you spray seal, seal this, it unifies the texturing on here a little bit more. So I'm gonna go and spray seal this part with a triple thick. I'd use my UV resistant clear, but then I'm going to take this and I'm going to use some spray adhesive on the back of it. So one more step here.
All right, final card. I don't know if you can see this, but it's really super glossy with that triple thick coating on here. But there's really kind of three different textures on here. We have the dye based inks, we have the alcohol inks, and we have the pigment ink. So putting that, it doesn't have to be the triple thick, but just any kind of acrylic sealant over the whole thing. It just kind of unifies and it, um, I don't know, on this one, the Marvy inks don't really dry dull, but uh, um, they can get deeper in terms of their saturation and uh, values, you know, in terms of light and dark. They look darker, they look brighter. Okay, on this one right here, I've used the spray adhesive. Let me see. This is still a little bit damp, so I'm kind of expediting the process right here. I'll put this, I think, right here. Okay. And just pray that straight. <laughs> but anyways, here we go. That's the uh, the card right there. Um, let's see. A couple little final tweaks here. Let's see. Because this went here now, I'm going to put a couple extra stars around that. To continue that out, I probably buried a couple of the larger stars right there. I always like this quote stamp with um, a lighthouse, um, or uh, with a lighthouse and uh, and a aurora borealis, because I always find that these kind of look like flames. And then here's a light, so love them to be a light as much as a flame. I like it in sunset colors too, with that um, darker tinge. I um, mean, a warmer tinge, like flamey look uh, to it. All right. But kind of a little bit more book cover-ish too, I think, with the, the quote stamp there. So anyways, half page scene using the new lighthouse scene in the Northern Lights type of format right there. Two different looks for the lighthouse, you know. High noon tends to look a you know it's basically the same stamps or almost the same stamps. I guess I switch it up reads on this one with the uh, the uh, the leaves on the other one, but um, yeah, two completely different looks for that. So different personalities with different stamps. It's always the best thing. That one always looks it almost looks smaller than that one, right? Even when I put that right up next to each other, that one looks smaller to me for some reason. Maybe because this one's all still very light and this one's darker so yeah all right anyways thanks for joining in for this impromptu daytime scene here hope you liked it and hope you like the look thanks so much and have a great rest of day oops All right, Linda, look forward to seeing what you do with the new stamps. All right, bye everyone. Have a great rest of uh, afternoon, evening. Thanks, Froggy Fresh. Great to see you.